Coming up on Chopper's political podcast. My only complaint is paper straws. Yeah. You have to basically drink your entire drink in a, in a minute or else it all collapses into a <laughs> soggy met mush. Welcome back to Chopper's political podcast, recorded at my favourite pub table, a stone's throw from the gates of the Houses of Parliament. Weekly, I bring you the best guests, gossip and stories from my favourite pub in the heart of Westminster. One of the main areas which the Tories are vulnerable in at the moment, well, one of them anyway, because there are many more, at the upcoming general election, is the environment, particularly in the southwest of England, where it seems that weekly Liberal Democrat leader Sir Ed Davey is spotted pointing at a river and talking about sewage. It comes despite efforts by the Tories to do more and hold polluters to account. At the forefront of that is Rebecca Powell, the MP for Taunton and a long-standing Environment Minister. Rebecca Powell, welcome to Chopper's Political Podcast. Thank you, pleased to be here. I'm obsessed about your notes. They look like my (laughs) A-level exam notes. I'm going to describe them here. They're basically, they've got, I can see four or five highlighter pen mark, different colours, you've got tabs, you're scribbled all over it. I mean, is your job quite a hard job then? Well, the thing is that um, as a minister or even as an MP, as, as you'll know, you, you have a huge brief and you have an awful lot of information. And although I, you know, obviously I I, I pride myself on being ahead of job. my brief, yeah. um, there's also a lot of stats and they change all the time and update. So I've devised this little system. I call them fact sheets with little boxes yeah. on them for each subject. You've got one for an iPad or, 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 uh, or I do a phone. use an iPad, but, I, but when you I do something it. like this or even travelling around the car, I can just look at them and it just, you know, okay. reminds me. Without looking at your notes then, <laughs> just to the Corey, do the Tories care about the environment? Well, I'm, yes, I was... Because when many I, say you don't. When I heard what, your introduction, I was already um, a, a desperate to answer you because... Look, we have done more on the environment than any party before us. We said we would and we have. It's just that you journalists are not telling people about it. Are we annoying? You're very annoying, which is why I'm so pleased to have this opportunity (laughs) to come on today. You've taken the ball on rivers, haven't you? Uh, What you've done is you've prioritised lower bills at the expense of plugging leaks and stopping uh, uh, funky well, shit going to our rivers. I'm, I'm going to come right back. Uh, let's let's unwind, shall we? Look, we are the party who have brought the Environment Act through government, and I was tasked with that. It took me two years. 350 officials worked on that, and it's the biggest bill to go through Parliament in two that decades. Okay? Me. I'm about the well, rivers. it should impress you because what it does is it sets us on a sustainable route for the future on restoring nature and we've set a legally binding target to halt the decline of spe- what we call species abundance for basic nature by 2030 that's yeah. no other country has done that in the world and it, it has a whole section on cleaning up our rivers and our water whole section on air and on re- uh, completely changing our waste and recycling systems and all of those sy- things are now in process we've been bringing through what we call the secondary legislation or the regulations relating to all of those things and water, as you know, is one of those things. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I'm, I'm the first person to say that anything you hear about sewage incidents or pollution is completely unacceptable. We've said that. But it's actually because we've put in the monitoring yes. that we know what's happening in, in our rivers. In 2014, wasn't it, also? We started, started. yes, back, way back in 20, um, so just before 2014. Mm. But the Labour Party, I think 5% of our storm sewage overflows were monitored. Now It is now 100%. So to your credit, you are monitoring a problem which is bad. Well, and, and previously, other governments hadn't been so upfront about it. They hadn't been. Okay. And if you remember, the Labour Party were taken to court by the European Commission for what they did to rivers. They failed to mention that to you. So, you know, they cannot be trusted so on rivers. Is it right to say you prioritise lower bills at the expense of, of sewage going into our uh, rivers? I, I wouldn't say that because actually, if you look at the amounts of money that water companies have had to invest in our infrastructure. And remember, part of the big problem is it's a Victorian infrastructure and it's being updated. And yeah. now actually we've accelerated yes. the the investment. And when they've got to spend uh, 96 billion pounds by 2050, but a huge amount of it's got to be spent by 2030. Thames Water wants That's... to crack up, crack up the bills, don't they? And, and they have taken out millions in dividends for, over, for many overseas well, owners in these companies. Well, 
I would say I'm the first person to, as well to say they should not be taking out dividends if there's any mm. uh, suggestion of pollution. And we've all of that has now been changed. They cannot pay dividends if there's any pollution incidents, um, they or any kind of harm to the environment. Uh. Uh, we've just announced our new fund, our water restoration fund, that any money from any pollution fines goes into that. That gets spent on cleaning up rivers or environmental yeah. work, na nature-based solutions. So, and I'm very proud because it was me that instigated something called the Plan for Water in DEFRA while, while I was yeah. doing the Environment Act, br bringing together all sides of this water picture because, uh, as you'll know, it's very complicated. It's not yeah. just about I, I, um, I, I, uh, water supply, uh, water you know, and, and pollution, and we have to make sure that's all above board. Yeah. It's also about water supply, uh, you know, where our water comes from and all of those things, we've pulled it all together in this plan for water. And that is a lot of those things yeah. I've just mentioned are coming through the plan. I mean, this very week, yes. we planned um, wet wipes containing plastic. Well, I'm going to come to wet wipes shortly. That was in the, that was in the, the plan, plan for water. The plan for water seems appropriate given how wet it's been this, this winter. <laughs> well, it's all your fault. Okay, It's always my fault. Um, <laughs> and that, of course, is the other side. Of it. We've got all the flooding side of water, yeah. which in this nation, um, we're in Ireland anyway, but... We're seeing more frequent flooding. But just as I heard you right there, if there's sewage le leaks, then these companies can't pay dividends. Is that right? Because there are sewage leaks across the board, so they can't yeah, pay dividends so the, anymore. Yeah, uh, so there's a, there's a huge um, criminal inves uh, investigation going on by the Environment Agency yeah. uh, and off what has been going on for a while. And as the evidence uh, comes to light, uh, the court cases will okay. happen. And just you've just banned this month the production of plastics in wet wipes. That's a great thing. Yeah. Because they're shoved, shoved down the loos, they pile Absolutely. up in rivers, they form bergs in the rivers. I hope, you, I hope your family don't throw any down the loo. No, no, mine are too old, my children, for, for <laughs> wet wipes, being changed nappies, but it all happened in the, old, in the old days. Yeah. But you're not banning the production of them, are they? And that's where your critics say, why the Labour would say they go further than you're going. Well, as you, you could ask Labour about, um, you know, why they didn't, so it, this is earlier, mm. uh, and where the factories are. So why aren't you banning uh, production but, of these uh, plastics? Uh, well, no, over 90% of our wet whites contain plastic, so that covers a huge number of um, them. So it's going to be sort of market-driven, oh. mm. and uh, if people aren't buying them, well, oh, yeah. then there won't be much of a case for, for producing them. So that's the way we... And as with all of these things, when you produce any kind of a legislation, mm. uh, there are always... Lots of other sides you have to take into account. Yes, uh, but companies been, worried about profits. We, we've been wanting to do this for a long time. It's the right thing to do. We did. A, we consulted some while ago, and there was enormous support mm. uh, across the board, really, for it. So, I mean, it's because, as you know, we already banned. Um, yep. The wash on and care a, a products contain, ca little, little containing containing microbeads yeah. used in cosmetics and wash on and off products. And plastic um, straws. They've gone. And gone. then. Um, and the, and Plates. and that uh, microbeads thing was something I started as a backbencher, yeah, and I remember. so that was a huge that was a huge step forward. And we did that actually very quickly, and that was incredibly popular, and the right thing to do. And then we've recently banned a whole lot of. Um, single-use um, items like plastic cutlery, plastic plates, uh, those polystyrene um, containers that a lot of fast food outlets use. Yeah. So they're just completely so unrecyclable. Ones now as they use. Yeah, so we, we, we've banned um, those things that really are, uh, we don't need as such. You know, they, they can be replaced by other types of things that are recyclable. Yeah. Uh, so that was the right thing to do. And then our carrier bag charge, of course, was um, has worked wonders. Mm. Introducing a charge on a plastic carrier bag, as I said, there's That's absolutely been immense, carrier bags have shot right down. So what other single-use plastics are on the power chopping board? Well, what we're looking at now is I've just um, been to Canada, actually, over the mm. weekend yeah. uh, to take part in the negotiations on the International Plastics Treaty. So this is something globally uh, that all countries in the world are negotiating on. Uh, the decision was only made in 2022 to go forward this, with this, and we're hoping it will be signed by the end of this year. So that is a so really global, fast global process. Bands, are they, are they? So it's to, it's just to, uh, well, not just, it's to basically uh, cut the, the plastic pollution by 2040. Mm. I mean, this is, sounds... Yeah. Straightforward, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. But this is a massive undertaking. And to get all countries to agree, uh, and we're having a real focus on um, 
you know, increasing the life cycle of plastics, the whole life cycle of a plastic, uh, looking at particularly problematic plastics because yeah. some plastics are really problematic. What do they contain? What polymers yeah. are you talking about? What chemicals yeah. are you talking Good. about? So all of those things are under discussion. But as you can imagine, the oil producing countries, yeah. you know, for them, this so, is this is hardly, you know, they that they're used to produce plastic. Mm. So you can imagine what that's the resistance like negotiating. That is huge. Yeah. I, don't, I think it's been okay for me, the the single-use plastics ban. Are you happy with it? I mean, one my only complaint is paper straws. Yeah. You have to basically drink your entire drink in a, in a minute or else it all collapses into a <laughs> soggy met mush. I found some very good straws made out of bamboo because, you know, oh. bamboo's hollow. And I brought them back as a present uh, to all my staff in Deborah. <laughs> bamboo uh, straws. And they're actually really good because they don't go soggy and you okay. can wash them. Okay. Yeah. Do you ever worry about your air miles? You travel to, to Canada and you're the environment minister. How do you, it's take, a good do you plant question. trees in Somerset? My children have been um, teasing me about that. Yes. But the point is, we do loads on Zoom, of course, of course. and uh, and iPads. And I, yes, I have just planted a little mini cops um, in my garden. Uh, uh, to, to make up in the for last your, few weeks. For your, uh, for your, so well, not to make you, up, just you, because I love doing it and but, um, I love seeing trees grow. But because and, you're flying a lot, you think you should plant more trees? Well, I, I, you know, I think that's a... That, if you can do that, uh, contribute to that. Do you think people um, who travel a lot should plant more trees? I think a gardens? lot of them do make a contribution, don't they, to things like that. And mm. a lot of the air, air um, uh, uh, organisations are, are contributing to that. But, yeah, I mean, it's something we should be conscious of. Those are the decisions that we have to make. Yeah. But equally, delivering the Plastics Treaty is going to be Huge, yes. hugely important. And to be there in person, actually, I can tell yes. you, it makes a massive difference. I was representing the UK government, and had we not been there, that would have been noticed because we're one of what we call the high ambition group of countries. So really driving the treaty, and we're doing a special piece of work mm. feeding into the treaty and what we call problematic plastics. When you see plastics. people like, like Prince Harry flying around the world and he's on environment, environmental <laughs> bents, do you think it's, it's already right for him to fly? There's this feeling, I think, that people... What, who can afford to fly, fly, and then lecture others why they can't fly. And it's a oh, I think those are the decisions for individuals to make. You yeah. know, and I make my own decisions and I have to decide, you know, Do I need to what's be there the right thing or the yeah. wrong thing, what's the what's the bigger benefit of going. Uh, but but also it's the same with everything we do, you know, in we are, as I said, the government doing the most on the environment and climate change and climate adaptation. That's a mm. huge thing, is we're changing how, how we, we live. adapt to it's, it. What, what's, a, what's a circular wardrobe? A circular wardrobe. I was reading about this. Yeah, well, in, in, um, in Tatlin, some women's magazine. Uh, it's things like um, making your clothes last longer. Uh, but I, you know, doing things like um, well, patching, I, I patching use all my and... two daughters' clothes. I mean, I love it. The clothes that they've finished with, I just go through. I'm always wearing them in Parliament. The <laughs> your daughters, outfit, what, you know, t-shirts, well, like, no, like mini mouse. suits and oh, jackets, suits. Okay, and yeah. um, it's so helpful. Dresses. <laughs> And so I wear loads of those. And also I'm recirculating a lot of the clothes I used to do wear when I was a television presenter. Yeah. I've kept a lot of them. Mm -hmm. So they're coming out the wardrobe, a lot of, <laughs> lot of these jackets. So, so it's things like that. It's making your clothes last longer. It's also mending them. Mending you know, them. People, do you sew and mend I them, actually darn? do. I did, I did, I did three items um, last weekend before I headed to what, Canada. What, what socks, Just little whole things little that holes. I've got, little holes. There's a hole in my favourite pair of trousers that I wear on all the DEFRA country do you side want, visits. What's your more teaching of make do um, and mend at school I mean we, I, I went to a, I went, I went to a convent and um, Catholic convent I'm not a Catholic and we did do needlework as one of the things we did and so actually I think I made a pair of pajamas or something but that was but my mum um, made a lot of our clothes so yes. I did a lot of sewing when I was a teenager but me perhaps, and my sister perhaps more children should be able to learn to sew at school well, to I make do and mend when they grow up um, I think that it's a really useful skill and uh, even if it's sewing on buttons, because actually also, I mean, the shocking, uh, one of the shocking stats is 45% of the clothes that are bought are never worn. So yeah. they go into landfill because there's, it's an area we're doing a lot of work on with the fashion industry mm, and the textile fashion, industry uh, to, to, to try and, you know, change this. Uh, because that is obviously an unacceptable addition to our emissions. So circular wardrobe down. is recycling your clothes and wearing more of them and then... Making them last longer, sharing them, them longer. with friends. Um, Do you share yours with friends? Looking at your camera when you can share your clothes. <laughs> That's a meal dressed in black. <laughs> yours wears black in meal. Um, 
Well, I've told you I share my, my kids' yeah, clothes, course, you know, yeah. and, uh, uh, and I'm very pleased to mm. uh, to do that. Yeah, Labour's increasingly punchy on the countryside, isn't it? I mean, it's it's uh, making are they? Out, yeah, well, they what, make, they've well, got a from a my sec- standpoint, they're making it out there. They're, they're the part of the countryside. They've got an alliance with National Trust. That must be a bit annoying for you, not? We work, we work very closely with all of these organisations and a lot of our um, restoration grants that we're doing for Big Upland peat restoration work, thousands of acres. I mean, we've got a commitment to reform, re, uh, restore 35,000 hectares of old or mm. degraded peat areas. Yes. Well, lots of these organisations like the National Trust, like the Wildlife Trust in particular, and the RSPB are taking advantage of those grants and often working with farmers to restore the land, we wet. You, they give you a hard time, the groups, don't they? they uh, well, we need to work very closely with them. I've always prided myself on having a good relationship yes. with them because it's you know it's all about you know it's all about working together to achieve the things we need, but also with our farmers. Our farmers are so important because they either own or. Uh, rent, rent tenant mm. 70% of our land mm. so they are absolutely critical I come from a farming background and I would say this government uh, does more than any other to work closely with our rural communities and actually we've tweaked and changed a lot of our new grants the environmental land management scheme which is a whole new mm. regime we've been able to bring in yes. since leaving uh, Europe that's the one really really positive thing that we've been able to do is to completely rethink how we manage the countryside with the money and we've we've guaranteed the same money as we got in Europe in the EU for our farmers but it's it's slightly tweaking it so that they have to do something for the money uh, now and, and a lot of that would be restoring nature but also combining it with sustainable food production and you like getting out and about don't you and, and with your late husband before he died, you went out with with, with, with a wheelchair with him, didn't you? And mm. did you, was it accessible well, enough for uh, the countryside well, for Charles you? Charles himself was an agricultural auctioneer, so I would say we we were steeped in in, in farming in the environment. Yeah. Um, but as he became ill, very sadly, uh, he then lost. Uh, he had cancer, which mm. moved around his body. He lost um, his motor skills. Mm. Luckily, he did not lose his uh, brain skills because he's a very very bright cookie. Uh, and that was tragic because he well, had been incredibly sporty. Mm. And it was a massive um, learning curve having to suddenly think about how you handle a wheelchair, a wheelchair mm. or someone in a wheelchair. Yeah. Um, and all of those, um, and I know so many people have faced this all the time, mm. but it, I can't tell you that as a, it made me really understand a lot more about what you need. Mm. And so... Um, access in the countryside sort of comes under my hat now and we've got a big fund for um increasing access and we're having um quite a a focus of quite a section of that on access for people with disabilities uh, also people with um Mm. visual impairments or hearing impairments and and in terms of the um if you're in a uh, a wheelchair. I mean, what what you want to know is Where that can I go? you can go somewhere. Uh, you will not be in a terrible hot sweat, which I was so often. And you can't. You don't want to show that to the person. You want to think that mm. they're in complete control. Uh, but you know, is there somewhere you can park? Can you get the wheelchair out? Once you have got the wheelchair out, are the paths okay, or are there loads of steps, styles? So actually, our new grant fund is. Uh, and I went to the South Downs to look at some wonderful projects that they've introduced with wider paths, flat, you know, paths. Uh, they're removing gates and styles so that you can get through them. Um, handles and bars and things where you needed them for people who have, you know, got can walk but have got difficulties. Yeah. And they had even used some of the funding for um, some really good mobility scooters. Yeah. Uh, they're easy because Charles had an electric wheelchair at one stage, which we got for the garden. But it was so difficult to use. Yeah, I can imagine. I think we barely used it. But it helped your mental health too, getting out and about. Oh, when you were... so we've got great data that if you it go into enriching, the countryside, yeah. I think it's between two billion and eight billion pounds worth of, um, you know, well-being Value, benefit yeah. because of your mental well-being. Uh, even and even if you've got health issues, it just does yeah, make you feel better. So, so all of those things are really important. And so, and you're looking forward to this elec- this uh, year, this election. What will the, what will the Tories' big offer be on 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 the countryside? Would you maybe offer to reverse the hunting ban? Uh, our our big offer will be uh, to continue working with our farming industry, but actually to keep doing what we're doing in terms of 
uh, increasing food security and sustainability. But that will that isn't that doesn't doesn't mean just growing more areas of food. It means being really efficient in your production uh, mm. and innovative using our research and development and uh, continuing to fund things like new crops adapted to climate change, crops that might need less water mm. or can adapt better uh, if we have hotter summers or, or all of those things will be really important even vertical farming okay. um, all, all different methods, and, and farming with less pesticides okay. you know really what we call uh, integrated pest management because we've got to look after the insects i'm thinking more less of farmers more just of people living in the countryside and why, why you're less of what got what, their back so what do we yeah what, what what might the offer be to people living in the countryside? yes so i think all of this building on the strengths of access to the countryside oh, yeah. new like nature nature parks nature cities yeah. uh we've just um national parks. launched a competition for a new national park we will be able to announce that before an election but but new ways for everybody to get into the countryside not just a small proportion uh not to trap not to not to destroy it but to enjoy it uh but also to keep restoring that nature that we've, we've done so much of already okay rebecca powell thank you for joining us this week on chopper's political podcast thank you for joining us today i'd love to know what you think about what rebecca had to say i tweet at christopher hope on x and email me chopper at gb news uh, dot uk if you enjoyed this podcast please tell your friends and if you really enjoyed it please leave a five star rating and a review on apple Podcasts, and spotify and elsewhere to help other people find this podcast thank you to the brilliant gb news team behind it mick booker jeff marsh rebecca noons uh, paul nell emil kunda ren ferrari and most of all thank you to you for listening if you want more chopper in your life and frankly who doesn't catch me during the week on GB News, uh, popping up all the time, really, and on midday on Wednesdays for PMQ's Live. Keep up to date with all the best political reporting on our website, gbnews.com. Until next time, cheerio!